You're going to do puddle two. So watch what I'm going to have him do. Okay, not bad. So what's he got to do? Watch, I'm going to have him put his foot over here because he had his foot here. So a little change like this, and he's going to do this. Boom. So sweep leg out wide. There we go. See how that was a little different? Now we created more rotation. All right, good job. Okay, Cassidy, let's go. For my left-handed thrower, she's not understanding this movement, so she's gonna make a couple of mistakes right now, setting her up for tons of success right now. Okay, go ahead. So she's a lefty. So here's the big mistake. Okay, ready, do that again. Watch, she's gotta jump a puddle, not think throwing. We're just gonna jump the puddle with the rotation. So how do you jump a puddle? Go ahead, jump. She's jumping like this. She's jumping off and she's leaving her chest back. See how her shoulders are staying back? So she's got to bring her shoulder this way and land with her shoulders on top of the knee. Try that again, watch. This is a big common mistake. See how she's looking and her shoulders don't turn? Her shoulders have to turn with that movement. Okay, does that make more sense? Now here's what I'm gonna show you. This is what we're gonna do for pillar three. We do the jump to teach you that you have to work off this leg, okay? We're going to do this now, sprint counter. Okay, so feel this. Put your band on, long, feel your sweep leg counter. So what you're going to do now is you're going to go, this is called a sprint counter, this is called a sweep step. Sweep step is wide. Here's what a lot of you guys will do. If I'm going this way, okay, a lot of you guys will do this. Instead of seeing the sweep go out and around, a lot of you guys will do this and cut. You see that? There's a difference between cutting it across and making a big circle. We wanna understand our alignment points. And sometimes guys will stand on one leg like this, especially when it comes to the glide or some of the throws. So the hip, when they straighten up, they're actually, you're gonna notice, tilting into the throw a little prematurely. So this is a really simple way to just make sure everything's aligned, the hips are in the right position. And now when we drop, which we call an elevator drop, we'll drop right down into position. So it's setting the angle, setting the stack. This is a really simple thing because we wanna see more throwers improving and we wanna help you with some simple cues that are gonna help do that. Recently this past week, a heptathlete from Canada that was a really talented female young thrower, U20 athlete, and we went through some basic things and one of the things was understanding that. So this athlete was setting up and was setting up like this. Now this position in a stand throw, I think is effective. You can do and get a pretty decent distance on the stand throw. However, if you land in your full throw in this position with momentum, you're gonna be crowding the board. Okay, so one of the things, again, when, when you hit the position and you're practicing, again, we say set the angle, set the stack, and this is gonna teach athletes to counter. And when I have that good angle over the delivery leg and we're countering, that's gonna allow us to feel our movement into our block leg, which is what we want. When we rotate, whether it's rotational shot or glide, we have to be able to move into that block position. So one of the big things is we wanna help a lot of our throwers. Here's a simple check. If you're doing this, you wanna get out of this habit as fast as you can. Set the angle, set the stack. There's gonna be two big tips in this video. So one of the things we're gonna do is, if we have speed and we land in this position, we'll crowd up, we'll hit our block late, and we're gonna inevitably be fouling throws. And so they might be decent throws because you've eaten up more and you're driving out, but the ring is seven foot, not nine foot. So we have to stay in that circle. So one of the core things we do, we, in our system, last year we started in integrating a ton of drill bands and it gives us a ton of feedback. You're gonna see a lot more people using these bands because what they do is it's a really great tool to give you some feedback. It's visual and you can feel where you're at through the throw. We incorporated this a lot and they give us a lot of visual cues and feel cues, a kinesthetic feels. So there's two ways we can show the counterbalance, but we're going to show you the first way. And if you're a member, you'll see inside of our membership, we go through and we break down this a lot more. But one of the things you're going to do is you're going to notice as I stretch, right? This is what a lot of people do. You see this? So they keep their foot and, or they do this and they keep their leg close or they do this. What we want to do is create that stretch from here. So as I set it down, you're going to see the band on this angle. So as I drive up, you'll see how I'm changing the angle from here to here. 
and that's what's going to be really critical. So that was one of the first big tips. We want you to set the angle and set the stack. And the second big tip, and we've probably talked about this in another YouTube video, is see here's the center of the circle. So we're going to put our foot basically a little bit from the center and we're going to set here and in the glide we like to set here we create a little separation and we reach and you can see how I'm stretching with the band. That's it. What we see is a lot of kids doing, like I said, from this, and you could see we had an athlete that was doing this. And what I was talking about earlier in the video, which I think the bug screwed me up my train of thought, was when I get here, this type of a stand throw will translate. You can get a nice big stand throw because if I'm right here, I can just teach and how to drive through the leg. However, if I land in that position on a full throw and I'm here and I have speed, I'll get a nice push, but I'm gonna fly right out of the circle. So it's not a stand throw that mirrors what you need to do in your full throw. One of the core things that you wanna do is when we're putting on something like this, we start here and we create separation and we reach and we're stretching here. You're gonna see how I can get over and now I'm gonna be here. You're gonna see how I'm gonna be able to be on this position, boom. And now I'm gonna be able to pull and really punch in and through the block. And you're gonna notice that you saw the angle of that band changing to this position versus being here. You can see how it's too far forward, here how it's stretched. And this is going to lead you into much better stand throws that correlate to your actual throw. Because as you come through your glide and everybody's here, you wanna see that angle, not this angle. And that is your tip for the day. Okay, so again, hopefully you guys found this video helpful. Like I mentioned earlier, if you have any interest in coming to any Throwing Chain Reaction events from Meritay Throws Nation, check the link below. If you are wanting to dive in deep and get into a lot of stuff, check out our uh, membership program, link below as well. And hopefully this tip was helpful. We wanna make sure that you don't miss it. We're getting into that time. We're gonna get closer to the season. So hit that subscribe button, click on notifications. If you have any questions, comment below. We always wanna hear what you want to see and we'll help you create some videos help answer some of your questions thanks so much and give us a thumbs up and we'll see you on the next video you're going to be crowding the board jesus hold on there's a freaking gnarly ass bee did you hear that thing jesus